on hand thing, man. And I remember last year he was watering plants, which I still don't buy yet. I'm still sniffing that one out from a year ago, but <laughs> his hand hurt. And I saw him. We saw it the other night. He did a dunk or something, and he hurt yeah. his hand. So I, I was concerned about that, but then the fourth quarter happened. So I ask you, did the fourth quarter change your mind that there might be a hand injury with Jalen Brown? No, not, I mean, yeah, I mean, it did. I mean, it was something was it looked like something was bothering him early in the game. You know, he was, I want to say not engaged. He was struggling a little bit and he hit the floor a lot in the last game they played. But you know, like you said, once he got the steal and the dunk and then all of a sudden the three started dropping, it was like, what hand? You know, it, it's it, it was similar almost a year ago to the day when he the whole hand thing last year. But then he came out with his hand wrapped up against Atlanta and lit them up with his hand wrapped. And then after that series, it was, well, maybe there's still something with his hand. It, it's it's funny how that works. But now I, I think he, you know, he had a good fourth quarter and it, 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 it killed the, like you said, the momentum was building ab- about that being a major topic going into the final stretch of the season. But I think the fourth quarter saved them from answering questions about his hand going forward. Yeah, I, I I feel the same way as you on that one. I I was hoping for a storyline or something to look into. And w- while we're on it, you know, Jason Tatum last year, back-to-back seasons, I should say, mm-hmm. has opted not to have surgery on his wrist. At the mm-hmm. beginning of this year, he got the cortisone shot. I don't think it's affected him at all personally. But no. but at some point, he's going to have to need, need surgery on that wrist. So we, I see one guy's got a hand, the other's got a wrist. It's just something that concerns me because they have 60 wins now, home court, best record, and now with about five games to go or whatever, they can really rest their guys and be ready to go for the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, there's no need to go out there and kill yourselves now. You, you've you secured it. Anybody you play in the West got to come through the garden. And last few years, those teams out West haven't been great dominant road teams. So, I mean, that's a huge advantage for you, especially coming as far east as Boston. But – I think that's a huge advantage. You wanted to lock that up. And now for all the guys that have hit their what, 65 game, you know, threshold or whatever, it's time to put those guys in bubble wrap and sit them down. Or Porzingis, he, he's already, I think, missed too many. But after the way he played tonight, I thought he was he was magnificent considering that, you know, they were missing um, Shea and uh, I can't think of, Williams. But Chet was still out there. But Porzingis kind of destroyed him most of the night. And I love their willingness to go to him in the post over and over again. They couldn't stop it. But I would take him and put him in bubble wrap too until, you know, last couple games to kind of get him loose and get him ready for the for the postseason. But I wouldn't force anybody out there if you don't have to. All right, you're coming home from the game tonight. You want to talk about the Celtics and your expectations for the playoffs. And who do you want to see in the playoffs mm-hmm. as well? The phone number is 617-779-0985. One takeaway for me tonight, Sarone, is Chris Dapp's Porzingis had a matchup with Chet Holmgren. Uh, Chet is an outstanding player. Clearly, um, we've seen his ability. Mm-hmm. But watching Chris Stapp's Porzingis, I don't know if he was motivated tonight, but early on, he went 7 of 10 from the field at 17 points in the first half and then pulled away in the second half, went 11 of 15 overall from the field, 27 points, 12 rebounds. I felt like it was a welcome to the NBA Chet Holmgren game for Chris Stapp's Porzingis tonight. Yeah, you saw the difference between being a young player with all the – the oohs and ahs, dribble moves, and all that stuff versus uh, a, a seasoned veteran that's just going to outsmart you. He knew where to get. His footwork was there. He was getting in position. He was taking advantage of Chet trying to be aggressive, all the guys trying to be aggressive, him automatically switching and leaving smaller guys on Porzingis. And every time he did that, it was like Shaq always says, it's barbecue chicken, and he took full advantage of it. And I love the fact that once they started collapsing and adjusted to it, you saw a couple like touch passes from Porzingis that led to open threes and open layups and stuff like that. That's the kind of stuff that's going to win them games in the playoffs is going down low and then getting the threes and getting the layups and stuff off of that. And they just, they destroyed OKC with that. And to me, that's a, that's a good sign because those, those back end defenders of OKC were still there. Those were their key guys that were out there tonight. They were missing the guys up top, but the guys down low, are a part of the reason why that team is going to win, you know, 50 plus games or whatever it is. So it was good to see them take advantage of that and a good side for Porzingis. And yep, put him on bubble wrap. I don't want to see him no more. I'm still worried about this dude getting hurt. So just put him away, put him on the shelf until the playoffs. Oh, yeah. And again, we, we, we've we all made the comment that he is the 
Celtics version of Rob Gronkowski. He's very important to their success. Mm-hmm. And I completely agree with you at the rest of this way. You should not see Chris Stapps, Porzingis. Uh, you know, we've talked about the bench this year. I mean, we've been doing post game now for the whole season almost. I mean, we are. Here we are towards the yeah. end of the year. But the bench was something at times we have been critical about. But mm-hmm. I, I don't know, man. Second half of this year, I, I've been truly impressed. And tonight, I know later on in the game they let some other guys play, but their rotation in the first half was really Horford, uh, Hauser, and Pritchard. Pritchard, mm-hmm. Pritchard and Horf, Horford had a big night. 16 yeah. points, and Pritchard did his thing. And you saw Hauser get going a little bit in the second half there. But do you think eight guys is where they go when we start thinking – Playoff rotations, and I mean, is Tillman your ninth guy? Or you think that's what they're going to roll with early on? I think it's going to be nine, but I think it'll be more Cornet. Okay, I think Cornet's going to get more of those minutes. I think he's played pretty good ball this year when he's been out there, and I think you know against matchups where you play, we'll put it like this: I think Tillman against kind of smaller teams because he's a, he can stretch the floor kind of guy. But against, let's say you play in Embiid or somebody like that, you need more guys to just waste fouls and just be bigger than Embiid. And I think Cornette would be more in that role. But I mentioned before, I've been real critical of Missoula, but you got to give him credit the way he's flipped and turned a weakness of theirs in the beginning of the season into a strength. And the Celtics bench is a legit strength. I mean, you've seen Hauser go for 20-plus. You've seen Pritchard go for 20-plus. Horford go for 20-plus. There's not a lot of benches in the NBA that on any given night can have eight guys that are capable of giving you 20-plus points and having big nights from behind the arc or in the paint. And they're one of those teams. I mean, you've seen Cornette get your double doubles. There's nobody that can match that depth. And I think that's a real strength of this. And a part of it is too, like I think tonight, I think I see some stats going around that the Celtics have the most, what, 25 plus win point wins in NBA history in the season with like 16. Wow. When, well, there you go. When you 20 point wins, excuse me. When you win that many games, have that many blowouts, the bench plays more late in games. So with the bench getting a lot of reps and a lot of run, you get this late in the season, they know their role. They know what they're supposed to be like a starting unit, and it makes them pretty dangerous. So shouts out to Missoula and them building big enough leads to where the bench can come in and get a lot of burn, and you see the, the benefit of that. Well, I think in tonight's game, they got a boost from Horford and Pritchard in the first half. They went on an 11-0 run, mm-hmm. and um, Pritchard had eight assists tonight, which outstanding. Yes. But yes. he was, they were also a part of the run in the second half, and then Jalen Brown kind of took it off in the fourth quarter. But, the, you know, people always talk about, oh, but you know, you might not see those guys when it matters. This team this year, I'm glad you mentioned Cornette's name because mm-hmm. I, I said Tillman. But I do think that, you know, Cornette's a part of what they do. He's yes. a big that goes out there. They respect him. He's a teammate. Like, he can pass the ball. He can clean up. He does everything you ask. And I do think that this year's team, although he may not be the most skilled guy, it works for them. It's part of what yeah. they do. It's their system. No and I think it's just it, it's what works, and it helped them go on Sparks tonight, too. Yeah, it's – it's. I mean, the Warriors won those championships. They had, you know, Pachuli starting at center. One of those dominant teams in NBA history you had this guy in the middle because it worked for them. You've seen many teams. I don't care if it's Bill Winnington or Luke Longley. You've always seen teams have a guy like that, but he's part of their chemistry. He knows where to be. They know where he's going to be. He rotates on defense. You can't teach size. You can't coach it. He knows how to be big. Everyone in the country knows about the Cornet contest. And you see other guys even trying to do it now. He knows how to be a disruptor defensively, and he finishes really well around the basket, and he knows his role. He's never going to do anything to put you in trouble. And a lot of teams would win if they just had a guy like that who's willing to just sacrifice and just be a body out there. And Cornette has been huge for them. And But all of them, him, Hauser is just, he's a weapon now. You know, he's like Duncan Robinson in Miami. He's, you have to fear him when he's on the court. And because you're so worried about him, that's how Cornette gets going. That's how Pritchard gets layups. They all feed off each other. And the thing is, when you get in the playoffs, you're not going to see for taking a night off or Porzingis taking a night off or anything like that. So you're going to see rotations where Cornette's going to be on the court with the starters. He's going to be out there next to Porzingis. He's going to be out there next to Horford. So they're going to have three guys, four guys now with Tillman to rotate so they can have double bigs at all times. And that's going to make them really difficult to score on in, in playoff, playoff games. They already don't foul a lot. They're pretty good at keeping teams off the line. And that's a that's a dangerous team. A coordinate, like you said, he's a huge part of what they do. 
One final one before we uh, hit the break here. And again, if you want to call in, 617-779-0985. We're here till midnight. We're going to talk about everything. i got a lot of things I, <laughs> I wanted to ask you, Sarone, besides hoops. But um, Gordon Hayward, remember that guy? Oh, what happened, dude? He is, uh, he's he's done. Yeah, I don't, it, I don't know if it's him or the team. I just figured I, when they got him, I said, oh, it's a good pickup for them. I, I, I figured the kid was going to be getting good minutes. I mean, they've been winning, so, I mean, it's hard to break up their rotation, what they've been doing. But, like, a game like tonight, you figured he'd get 25 minutes, and he's just there collecting a check. And he was more aggressive than this when he was in Charlotte. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know if he's one of those, I don't really don't want to be here thing, but you're on a team that's, what, second, third in the Western Conference. They're having a good season. All the, the spotlight's going to be on so be on them, excuse me. So they're going to be counting on him at key times to make shots or to make a play for them getting in the playoffs. I hope he can do it. I was a fan of Gordon Haywood. I just think the timing of when he was here just didn't line up. Young team, and he, he was asking him to be the leader. And But I, I, I thought he'd be a good addition to the Thunder, and it's not looking like it right now. Maybe he didn't want to be there. I don't know, but it's just not a good look for him. When you look at them tonight, do you – Say, wow, Shea Gildress Alexander really is like, you know, an MVP with what he's playing. I know he's got good players around him. He does. Yeah. But tonight, he does. tonight it looked like, wow, they really were missing the MVP. <laughs> Look, I mean, he's a great player. He's a scorer. He's a defender. He's a league leader in steals as well. I think the way the Celtics played tonight, they would have got smoked either way. I don't think he would have made a 35 point difference. Um, but I think this team is really good. But I think I think I told you beginning of the season. There's always teams that go to top speed to start the season. They go to their their max. They play playoff basketball all season to prove they belong. I think them, the Thunder, you know, Minnesota, those, those teams. I mean, excuse me, not the Thunder, the Magic, Magic Thunder in in Minnesota. They play in their max basketball. I want to see when the playoffs start. Do they have another level of this? Is this the best? This is they've given you their best. We know Denver can go to another level. We know Boston. We know those teams, the Clippers, Suns. We know they those players can go to another level. I want to see if OKC, if they've already maxed out and showed us their best basketball. All right, Saron. Well, a lot of people we're on YouTube, but now uh, so we have a <laughs> we've opened up the listenership, and I like how someone uh, Gravy says Hayward has gone wayward. Carry on, <laughs> carry on, my wayward son, Gordon Wayward. <laughs> he is. Uh, <laughs> I never forget that shot, though, for Butler, half court. It almost went in. They, yeah. they could have had one of the biggest in history. But, man, he got paid, dude, and now he's uh, he's, he's, he's 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 doing the, the ring chase. Is that what's happening right now? I guess, man. I think he should have chose somewhere else. But, yeah, I mean, <laughs> look, I, I wanted the dude to come back to Boston. I think he'd be playing harder than he is now, but that's just my opinion on that. But it, he's, he's got $200 million deals in the bag. Yeah, he's out there getting a workout, and I don't blame him. <laughs> All right, a couple of things I did want to get into uh, just from around the league, and if there's anything you want to get in else on the Celtics, 617-779-0985. Uh, Sarone Battles here. Skaz is here as well. We're on YouTube. I see all you guys in there. I'll read your chats throughout the night. I'm Joe Murray, but first, let's take a look at the Sports Hub headlines, and we'll talk to you guys right after this. Sports Hub Headlines. Celtics win 135-100. That's a 35-point win. They were 12-point favorites. They cover.
Oh, big, big, big spender here. That's right. Morning show guy, afternoon, <laughs> you know, mid, yeah. midday radio guy. You know, he's uh, he's it bringing, must be nice. Must be really nice for that guy. <laughs> we love you, Leroy. He's probably. Driving. I watched it on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's probably driving home right now. Like, you know what? I'm gonna call those guys. Uh, so the, the, the Celtics win. If you want to call about it, you can six one seven 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 nine zero ninety eight five. Um, let's look around the rest of the league. Uh, it's actually funny. Skaz mentioned tonight that Malachi Flynn scored 50 points tonight. <laughs> Who? <seen> Who? <laughs> Off the bench Flynn. in Detroit. No, like, so again, <laughs> last week we heard about the, the Porter, like, you know, p- potential betting thing. Like whenever yeah. I see something like that, my antenna raises, like you ever, you ever notice like a football player, they do well and they get drug tested the next day. <laughs> you <exactly>. know? <laughs> I would look into this guy right now, <laughs> but that's kind of the story of the night. Like, what the hell? Like Detroit is a guy that could, you know, 50, 50 points. It's just, it's wild to me. So I thought that one was kind of interesting tonight. It is. It, it's, it's, it's so much going on. I would say so much going on. It's, it's the, the today's the, the NBA, the, the lack of defense and just random people could go out and get 50. It's another guy. You could just add to the list of like, seems like 50 guys scored 50 this year. And it's like, wait, this dude was on the bench of the worst team in the league and he scored 50. And they lost. I think they still lost the game. <laughs> one twenty one, one thirteen. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. I mean, he had the game of his life. I guess it happens from time to time. But hey, if you if you if if he put some money on himself or his family did, so somebody's doing all right tonight. All right, I'll ask you about the box coming up in a minute here. But first, let's talk about what happened last night. Joel Embiid makes his return. Mm-hmm. Now, Oklahoma City was on a back to back tonight. They lost yeah. last night. They're without Shea Gilgis Alexander as well. So. You know, tonight wasn't a great spot for them. But Philadelphia-Boston in the first round could be a really intriguing matchup. They've battled Boston twice this year. But, mm-hmm. you know, it, would it be any threat to the Celtics at all? And could Joel Embiid, you know, having some time off, be fresh for the playoffs? Um, He could be, but I don't think it's going to make him any faster than what he is. It's not going to make him his game any different than what it was. And... Until he proves everybody, I wouldn't say everybody, me. So he proves me wrong that he can be better in the postseason than he is in the regular season. I don't think he they're that much of a threat at all. At all, because I've seen weaker Celtic teams beat better Philly teams than this. You know, I mean, it's they don't have much depth. It's pretty much Embiid and Maxi late in games, mostly Embiid. And everyone stands around and watches him. And they, they're they just, they're not the same team as we've seen them in the past. They're not as deep. And I think with the Celtics, look, if you want to face them, face them now, get it out the way early. And I think they should beat this team in five games max. Get it over with, get your rest. And look, Embiid, he's going to be a challenge. But I think him with the time off, with the knee injuries, whatever, he's going to have the brace on, he's going to be grabbing at it. I think he missed some time last year. He was holding on to his knee when things got a little tight. But Al Horford knows him inside and out. Porzingis, Cornette, you know, Tillman, they have the size to just keep throwing fresh, heavy bodies at him. And they just they just wear him down over time. And I think Tatum and Brown will have a night against him. It's going to take Maxi or somebody, uh, Harris, having a 30-plus point night in order for them to hang around with the Celtics. But I think the Celtics role players are better. I think Holiday, Derek White, Al Horford, those are the guys that are going to make the key plays. And they're just so much better than what the Sixers have to offer. So I would welcome them in the first round. I think they'd be an easy an easy knockout for the Celtics. I'll tell you this, Saron. Of all the teams right now, this, this is just me observing. I've been uh, I've been dabbling a little bit towards, you know, on the bets the last couple of nights. And at <laughs> le- in my opinion, right now, between, after the Celtics, I think Orlando, Miami, and Atlanta are the best team, playing the best basketball in the East. I think besides the Celtics. Now, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know if they're threats or anything like that. Yeah, and, it's playing better. And the Pacers ha- are hanging around, right? Mm-hmm. So so I just I look at it and say, if they lose again, the Pacers could fall into that play-in. Yeah. I just, I, and and I'm, where I'm going with this is the Bucks lost again. And it, Damian Lillard's been missing, which, is, which I think is huge. And Porzingis, uh, not Porzingis, Giannis is putting up all those points. But when I look at it, the teams that are playing the best could be the teams that the Celtics play in the first round. Yeah, they could be. And but I want to see what those teams look like when playoff defense is is, is applied. You know, the Bucks right now, they're not just losing, they're losing to bad teams. 
Minnesota, Memphis is trying to lose games, and they beat the Bucks. The Bucks, I think, lost the other night to yeah. Washington or something like that. It was a bad L for them the other day. And, you know, excuse me, the, the Milwaukee, they, what are they now, 13 games behind the Celtics or something crazy? Yeah, 13. Like, and what are they now with Doc? Are they... <laughs> they're bad. <laughs> they're, they're under 500 with them. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, can, can you fire a, a coach, another coach in the same season? But, I mean, it's 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 bad for them. But I think the Celtics defensively are so much better than I think people give them credit for. And I think they can really turn it up, even if they're off shooting the threes, even if not playing down low, which drives me crazy. I think defensively they can give those Atlanta and Orlando, Cleveland. I think the Knicks can, when they're fully healthy, are decent, a really good team, a tough out. But I think defensively, Boston can make it so hard on them, and they can they can choke the life out of a lot of these teams. But I thought the Bucks were really going to be the team to, to really you know put a fear into the Celtics, but they they're just getting worse as things go on, and it's it's pretty wild to see. All right, uh, I just saw some news come over on Twitter, and I, I don't use Twitter as a news source, Sarone. I just use it as a <laughs> oh somebody said this. So Skaz, if you can, if you can. Can you get the quote from Jalen Brown talking to uh, to Washburn? Uh, Jalen Brown told Gary Washburn he has a strained ligament in his left hand, said he's not concerned, and will continue to play. So, yeah, he's not concerned. But how many turnovers <laughs> did he have tonight? I, I actually, again, we were monitoring this thing all night. Like, in the studio here, you should have heard, heard me. Oh, this, this is a story, guys. <laughs> We got something for tonight. I hope Tyrone's ready to go on this one. And again, he, he blew doors, literally blew doors in the fourth quarter. But now he's announcing he has a uh, a ligament uh, right now. He called it a strained ligament, which, you know, it's not broken or anything or fracture or whatever. But uh, he had five turnovers tonight, which uh, led the team. So any concern again? Man. The FBI wouldn't have got that out of me. Like, what are you just giving what are you that up doing? for? I know. I agree with you. <laughs> I would have kept that to myself. Like, yeah, you know, and gave the generic answer. Like, yo, we're all banged up this time of the season. Everybody's dealing with something. We're all a little, you know, so some welcome rest would be needed or something. Say anything. But don't come out and tell everybody that. Now you're playing Friday and Sabonis is swatting at your hand trying to get turnovers. You know, now you're you're in bad shape. I wouldn't have told anybody that. Why? It just kept between me and the team and the doctors. And now, like you, like we said, like you said to open the show, we're going to be questioning his hand the rest of the way. He has a bad first round. We're going to be looking at that hand. I wouldn't have said a word and just played it out. Now I'm going to now I'm going to that, that I didn't even think of that until you said it. But now I need to look up the story of watering plants last year, Jalen Brown, because, <laughs> again, I'm out on that one. I'm not buying that story. But he said he, he cut his hand watering his plants, and I remember it was in a big wrap. What, what did he throw it at? The, like, that, that's right. So that, it was his right hand. Is this injury his left hand now? And I, I, I actually, we have to look into it. Do you know this guy? Is it his left hand? Yeah. So just to add a little clarity, I haven't found audio yet, but uh, from Josue Pavone, Jalen Brown says his injured left hand isn't something he's worried about. And the exact quote is, I have a, I got a sprain or a strain on the ligament. I think it's fine. It's something I'm not concerned with moving forward, but it bothered, but it bothered me a little bit tonight. Why? Yeah, I wouldn't have said a word. Oh, why? Why say it? I get it. The way I the way I interpreted the news was different than the way that Joe Sway from CLNS, who does a great job. Oh, no, you there. close enough. But yeah, I mean, like, he said it. We have the he record of it. it now, and that's it. Now we need to worry. How's Jalen Brown's hand? Jalen Brown's hands. Remember, you wore the glove there at the All Star Weekend. Was right. that what it was for? I mean, isn't this just shut him down until the playoffs at yes. this point? Just shut yes. him down. Now yes. it is. But dude, strained ligaments, strained whatever in your hand. These things don't go away. They, no. they linger forever. You need cortisone. Maybe that's what he does. I don't know. But, again, you everyone questions your left hand. You wanted to show everybody about your left hand in Slam Dunk Weekend, <laughs> and now your left hand is either strained or sprained or tweaked Both. or deked or you whatever. Yes. <laughs> now now we got throw oh, two more weeks around of just Jalen Brown. Zooming in on his hand. It's, oh. it, the, the, the way to make the, the, the talk stop is not to play him. Because now every time he plays, you're going to be looking at it. They're going to be zooming in on it, especially, especially the national televised games. 
sit him home, put a mitt over it, and have him do, don't even play Xbox when you go home. Just don't water his plants, nothing. Just go home and chill until the after the day after the playing game, show up for practice, and hopefully you should feel a lot better. You're still young. You got 300 million laying around. Just go think about that. Don't even worry yeah. about that hand until the until the, the postseason. Put the big I'm, after that, I'm sitting everybody. No yes. one's playing. Put Porzingis in bubble wrap. And then you ever see the hamburger helper head? You know that little hamburger? Put that <laughs> thing on his hand. Like a big giant pad. And listen, don't move. Don't, don't, don't do move. No. <laughs> don't it's like when computer. your parents get you dressed. Yeah. You, know, you know, Easter Sunday. You sit on the edge of the bed and don't move, you know. Just don't do anything. And I'd forfeit every game the rest of the season. Wouldn't even put none of my, none of my players out there. We just just take the L. I'm I'm not nope, I'm not risking it. You're too good. The your opportunity is right there in front of you. You think the Easter conference was easy before. It's easier now. You got home court. I'm chilling. Your 60 win team, there's nothing to play for. Everybody's gonna get their all NBA votes and all that stuff. I'm not playing none of this, none of the starters the rest of the way. I'm sorry. Yeah. And I might not play Richard in in, in Cornet at this point. Mm. But nope. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm shutting everybody down just because he opened his mouth. Bring Jordan Walsh back up. You know, you yep. get the other kids. JD Davis. Yeah, he let him play. You know, he could use some burn. You know, let them yep, all I'm play. Not. Let them all. Yep. The main red claws would be playing the rest of the season if it was up to me. Yeah. <laughs> Give him the Mario gloves, says Zeke. You know, the Mario, you know, they wear <laughs> just, those big just, white gloves. You just sit him. Yep. And sit in the corner. Don't even show up at the game. We don't want no one trying to chase a loose ball and we're falling into the front row. Don't even show up. And, oh, Why did he say that? I know. And the other thing is, I'm getting people already saying, well, it's it's not a shooting hand, so don't worry about it. No, it, it's a big problem. For a guy who turns the ball over a ton and questions his handle, oh, the fact he said anything, I hate the transparency right there. If this was some other superstar, I don't think they let it leak. I don't even think, you know what? I don't even know if Tatum would let it leak. No, don't say anything. Don't say anything till the season is over and you're sitting there with the trophy sitting on the table next to you with your T-shirt and your hat on and pull a LeBron James and just stick your hand up with a wrap on and like, oh, yeah, by the way, my hand was cracked. Just wait till the season's over. Don't say anything right now. Now the chronicles of Jalen's hand <laughs> for the next two weeks. <laughs> and I don't care that he had 15 points in the fourth quarter. He said he sprained his hand. So yeah. now we're going to have to talk about it. See, now it became a storyline after all. Just like that. All he had to do was keep his mouth shut. All right, <laughs> just just leave it alone. But a <laughs> hey, but all in all, good season for all these guys. Sixty wins. You know, we thought they were going to be special in the beginning, and it turned out to absolutely be the case. I didn't expect them to be seven, eight games better than the rest of the league, or twelve, thirteen games better than the Eastern Conference. But I'll take it. And it's weird. It's it's rare to see a team this good and not really be an equal even in the Western Conference or a team that's close to you and wins, as good as Denver is, there's still seven games worse than this, which is am which is amazing to me. But, you know, shout out to them, and they did what they had to do. Now you just, just make it to the postseason right now and make it through it healthy. All right, if you want to continue the basketball conversation, you can do so. I'm going to switch things up on you, Cerrone, on the other side. That's cool. That's cool. We're here until midnight tonight. He's Cerrone Battle. I'm Joe Murray. Skaz is here as well. You're listening to 98.5 The Sports Hub. Don't go anywhere. There's more Joe Murray. More Joe Murray. On the way on 98.5 The Sports Hub. Hey, Maz here. We all know how important it is to live a healthy lifestyle. I try to stick to a healthy diet, exercise, and, of course, I drink plenty of Bigelow tea. Love the great taste. In fact, I refuse to settle for anything less than the best, and that's why I'm proud to be a Bigelow tea drinker. So grab a mug full of your favorite Bigelow tea and tea proudly. Bigelow tea, official hot tea of the Boston Red Sox. Hey, it's Felger here, and it's hard to imagine, but spring is coming sooner than you think. Now, our friends at East Coast Metal Roofing are so excited that they have officially launched their Spring into Savings sales event. If your home or business needs a roof, right now is the best time to schedule it. Their roofs have a lifetime warranty. They never rust and can be installed on any style of home. Never, ever repeat. Place your roof again. Schedule a free quote right now at EastCoastMetalRoofing.com. Mention 98.5 The Sports Hub or Felger and Maz, and you'll get 10% off the entire job. Visit EastCoastMetalRoofing.com. Hey, it's Charlie Coyle. I've teamed with Wallpoint, formerly Unicare and 98.5 The Sports Hub for face-offs for first responders to let all first responders know it's okay to talk to someone when the job gets to be too much. 
We also want to let anyone listening to this message know that if you or a loved one are thinking about suicide or need emotional support, the Lifeline Network is available 24-7 to help you. Just text or call 988 and Lifeline will provide you confidential help for free from a skilled, trained crisis worker. There's hope in getting help. Call or text 988 now. My name is Mary Beth Adams. I am the Executive Director of Inpatient Services at the New England Recovery Center. We provide a nurturing, welcoming environment surrounded by beautiful grounds. We realize that recovery is very individualized. When I think about all the people that we've helped at New England Recovery Center, it really makes me proud. We'd love to be a part of your recovery story. If you're ready to take action for you or someone you love, please call us at 1-877-MY-REHAB. Call 1-877-MY-REHAB or visit New England Recovery recoverycenter.org. Struggling with old school HVAC contractors, choose Tetra instead. No more waiting for in-person estimates. With Tetra, get a quote for your project in minutes. Just visit tetra.com, answer a few questions, and get a guaranteed price to upgrade your heating and cooling system. Zillak and Bertrand get you through the midday. Joe Murray gets you right through the night. I actually spoke with women today. On the Sports Hub. Honestly, defense is so much easier. So much easier. You get to fly around. You get to use your hands. I used to cheat because I would just study conceptually what they would do. In my situation, I'd only come in really on third down third in a passing situation yeah. on second down. Making the stop for the Patriots was Julian Edelman. A, I just hold them for five yards because they're not going to call it. And I knew receivers hated that. 
and B, just play to your leverage, play to your help, and then make a tackle if you have How to. How many times did you hear Bill talk to those defensive backs? Win your leverage. Win your leverage. If you actually understand what that means and do it, that's half the I didn't battle. lose my leverage journey. If you watch the film. Cover one, you get help in the middle, but you play outside leverage. Cover five, don't let somebody inside. Like, I'm thinking that AFC championship game against the Chiefs. We're an inside passing team. They go to cover five and open up the middle of the field for us. Thank you. Every time. Uh, every time. I mean, if you're playing defense to cover five, do not ever, 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 ever let the guy in. Sir, so we're playing that because Julian Edelman did a podcast with Ernie Adams. Mm-hmm. And there's so there's so much here. There, there, are, there is so much to really dissect into this thing. But Edelman was talking about the time where he played defense mm-hmm. and how you, he used to hold for five yards and it was really <laughs> easy for him. And it's so, and you know, he, they, they talked about how playing certain teams, they knew how to run offenses and they talked about, you know, what happened against the Chiefs in the championship game. So th- there's so much here. Mm-hmm. But there's one, there's one wild one that we heard today. You, were you? Did you watch Friday Night Lights, the show or the movie? You probably seen the movie, right? The movie. I didn't watch yeah. the show. Me too. I never. I never watched the show, but I've seen the movie, so I think we all get the gist of it, right? High school mm-hmm. kids. Yeah. So Ernie Adams is talking to Julian Edelman about Friday Night Lights. We got to hear this one. Mr. Adams, are you responsible for Friday Night Lights? Yes. Yeah. That is true. So I will tell you the story. Buzz Bissinger, who wrote the book, was a year behind Bill and me at Phillips Academy in Andover. So when Bill and I actually played together, the reporter for the school newspaper who covered it was Buzz Bissinger, who went on to write Friday Night Lights. So Friday Night Lights wasn't really his intro to high school football. It was covering Bill and me. Uh, and he goes on to be, to be a writer. Buzz calls me up. Buzz says, I'm thinking about going out to Western Pennsylvania and writing the book about high school football and the team and the town. And I know Buzzy has never been west of Philadelphia in his life. And I say, Buzzy, if you want to do this, get your ass out to West Texas where they take their football seriously. And that's how Friday Night Lights came to be written at Odessa Permian High School. He's a fantastic writer. Do you really believe Ernie Adams created Friday Night Lights? (laughs) He, he, He had a hand in it. He had a little hand. He told him to go to Texas instead. I mean, if you're going to give him that credit, then yeah. I mean, that's a, it's good. Until someone comes out and denies it, I guess we just got to go with it. <laughs> you got to be careful of the hand tuck, by the way, with the Jalen Brown stuff, you know. You might have had a hand in it. Was it his left it hand? <laughs> Anyways, you got a thought on that, Skez? Yeah, I mean, I, I, why would he lie about it, you know? I mean, <laughs> he went from he's, take, Ernie. He, he's Ernie Adams taking credit. For everything the Patriots did. So why don't we take credit for one of the best movies <laughs> of all Lights. time? Is he taking credit for... I, he said he invented it! Yeah, like he's joking, though. I mean... It, you think, you think that's, he's joking? You think that's as successful if the guy does it in Pennsylvania or whatever? No shot. So Ernie yeah. Adams is the is the mastermind behind it all. Not the mastermind, but he's the guy that was like, hey, maybe don't go there. Go yeah. to a place that they take high school football I don't know. seriously. I watched Varsity Blues before. You know, I've seen some of these movies. <laughs> uh, you know, I watched the program. You've seen program the program. Classic. Oh, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> oh, is a Joe Kane, right? <laughs> and then there was uh, Latimer. Latimer and uh, oh. Alvin Mack, the linebacker. Laying on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that, yeah, that was the yeah, the play. Oh, that was bad. Remember when, remember when that came out? That was like, yeah, I'm trying to tell kids not to do it. Exactly, I remember that. Like growing up in the city, like yeah, they, but uh, no, that was a great. And then uh, Omar Epps was the running back. Darnell, he's right. right. And Halle Berry. Halle Berry was the girl. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I love that movie. James, but I mean, James... he, he, if he, okay, he he. he Chose the well. He told them to do Texas instead. He chose. He told them what school to pick and that stuff. I guess we can give him credit, but it's like it's like the guy who decided to choose Harrison Ford over Tom Selleck for Indiana Jones. It's like we know Spielberg and George Lucas were behind it, but this guy's like, I'm the real star of the movie. If not, it would have been Tom Selleck. Like it's it's weird, but I mean, yeah, we'll give him some credit, but I wouldn't give him full credit for the whole the book and everything. I I always thought that it was because Selleck wouldn't shave his mustache that he that he didn't get the role. Yeah, I think it was something crazy like that. He just was like, nah, I'm doing this new show called Magna P.I. I can't do it. I'm not risking that for this stupid movie. <laughs> mm. See how that worked out. But, yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to give him too much. I'm giving, yeah, like Scott said, though, if it's in anywhere outside of Texas, it might not have had the same impact, especially the movie, as it, as it did over, over time. Since we're talking about Texas football movies, I must bring up Necessary Roughness. Uh, the oh, Texas man. State Armadillos with Armadillos. Scott, Scott Bakula was the quarterback. Sinbad was the yeah, tackle. Was the, the, Kathy, yeah. Kathy Ireland was the kicker. <laughs> Jason Bateman. <laughs> Some Ozark stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, but that, I wonder why they stopped making football movies. Like It's like the league is like, oh, we don't want to you know, make the sport like, put it in a bad light. What? They just stopped making sports movies, like real good football movies. And I wonder if the NFL is like, we don't need any. Like, after any given Sunday came out, it was like, all right, we don't want this image on our league. Even though we know what the deal is, it was like the league just cut all that off and yeah. we've been robbed of good football movies. They did the um, Adam Sandler uh, remake there. What was that called? Oh, uh, Longest no, Yard. Yeah, Longest Yard. They did that. Yeah. Has there been it. a football movie? Uh, yeah, Rock did like Gridiron Gang, but that was. Yeah, the kids and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. They, they not... do that. Any Remember kid. the Titans? Ooh, ooh that, was, that was a good one. Remember the Titans? Again, kids. But they won't do like an NFL or college football movie anymore. Recent football movies. Now you got now you got me thinking. Any oh, given Sunday might have been the last one. Do, the last serious one. Yeah, as far as football. Yeah. Wow. No, what's the one with the kid who's suing the yeah, suing each oh, other? Oh, blindside. Blindside. The blind side. There oh, you that's go. a good one. But that was yeah. still years ago. It's still kind of Disney. That was still yeah. a while ago. Yeah, it was a while. Don't ago. watch that Kurt Warner movie though. The underdog story. That thing was bad. No, nah, I didn't even not even bother. Oh, the one with um, the one with Wahlberg when he's playing oh, for the yeah. Eagles. Oh yeah, Invincible. Invincible. <laughs> uh, Vince Papali. <laughs> it's sad that we've seen all of these, haven't it? Hey, hey, by the way, I know we're talking about sports. Have you seen The Way Back yet? It's a basketball movie with Ben Affleck. No, give that one a give that one a search one night. Okay, it looks like it's pretty serious. It, 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 it's, it it's, yes. So get your okay. get your serious face on. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll give it a I, look. I kind of liked it. It wasn't uh, it wasn't so. Bad. Yeah, I watched uh, Hypnotic, and that's the last time I think I'll ever see a Ben Affleck oh. movie. <laughs> don't do it. Do it, but don't do it. You have to see how bad it is. Sometimes you got to watch them because they are so bad. It's, it's just, bad. So. It's just one of those. All right, we're going to take it's... a break. I want to get your thoughts on the trade that happened today in the NFL. We'll get into all that after the headlines here. I'm Joe Mari. Sarone Battles here. Scaz, 98.5 The Sports Hub. From the town, Fair Tire Studios, home of the Celtics, Bruins, Rivs, and Patriots. Boston's home for sports is 98.5 The Sports Hub. He's leading in group station. Sports Hub headlines. The Celtics have clinched home court advantage, the best record in the NBA, and beat the Oklahoma City Thunder tonight by 35 points. Their next game's on Friday. Jalen Brown, after the game tonight, says he has a sprain or a something in his hand that he's not worried about. I don't know why he had to say anything. Red Sox won one nothing. They swept. They play the Angels Friday night. And there was a trade in the NFL today. We're going to get Saron Battle's thoughts on that. Stefan Diggs going to the Houston Texans from Buffalo. Headlines. They are brought to you by Dulce Vita Tequila. Awaken with 88 laws. Their at-home program has you covered. Receive the same great program and results. Then receive free support for life. Awaken with 88 laws.com. I get confused on that one every single night. And I'm Joe Murray here on the Sports Hub. No matter where you go, you're always connected to Boston sports with the 98.5 The Sports Hub app. Download it wherever you get your apps today. You go to YouTube.com and you type in 98.5 The Sports Hub and then you just watch the show live. Or you can download the app, click on 98.5 The Sports Hub and then watch the show. And you can watch it on your television too if you have an app. So there you go. Sarone Battles here tonight, and I'm looking in the YouTube chat right now, and there is some Tom Selleck hate going on in there. <laughs> they, they don't like his mustache. <laughs> and then people are bringing up the Super Troopers, the guy with the mustache. Which, oh, um, you know what I, oh, what was that? Super I, I, yeah, Super Troopers. I, I wish they, they could get the Super Bad Cops with the Super Troopers. 
and call it the super bad troopers. And if anybody's listening, I would gladly help write this. So we'll put that into the existence. Uh, there was a trade today. Mm-hmm. Stefan Diggs going to the Houston Texans, and they're going to eat $31 million of dead cap, and they free up $18 million. So, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Last I checked, the wide receiver room for the Bills is, uh, you know, Shakir is a guy that's that had a nice little season, but now he's all of a sudden your two receiver. And Dalton, you know, we, we, we know about who they, you know, they drafted a kid last year, and they got Curtis Samuel, but... They they have to have something up their sleeve to move on from this guy today. It's it's me and Scaz, man, with with three receivers they got That's going right. into the season. <laughs> I mean, it, it's you know, Gabe Davis is down in Jacksonville now, and you know, Diggs is gone. I mean, they're they're most likely going to come away with one of these receivers probably in the first round. One of these young guys that everybody wants. It's a deep receiver draft. I mean, they could come out get one first and second round. But they need help with safety now. They lost other. They lost a lot of key players, so they. I would not say they're rebuilding because you still have Josh James, still have the quarterback, but maybe they feel they can get better, you know, addition by subtraction kind of thing. Maybe his attitude or some of the other things, the way he's kind of acting, maybe wanted his wanted his way out. We don't. We'll never know. But I think they're going to come away with somebody in the draft, and they they they're going to put pair up a young receiver with Josh Allen to see if they can get him up to speed pretty quickly. But you look at the Patriots schedule, there might be a couple wins you might wins you might be able to steal. So that's that's two, but <laughs> I don't know where the rest are going to come from. But it's a it's a if I'm Houston, I'm looking at it like, yo, it's a big move, a big pickup. You know, they got the ground game now with Joe Mixon. They already have the tight ends. Their two top receivers are already really good guys. They're really fun to watch too. But the key is Will Diggs walk in like T.O., like give me the ball, throw me the ball, and just try and be the man as opposed to playing a role with the other receivers that are out there? Because it's pretty clear that, you know, Stroud has a relationship and has chemistry with Nico Collins and and, uh, Tank Dell. There's something there. They're really good together. And will he come in and by demanding the ball, will he mess that up? But if he falls in line and plays his role and and fits right in, man, that's a dangerous offense, especially you get them in that dome. So let's uh, let's talk about this one for a little bit because, you know, we we used to be able to just relate every trade that happens to the Patriots, right? Mm-hmm. Like the Patriots would have never been in on Stephon Diggs, and I don't think yeah. Buffalo would have ever sent him there. And they wouldn't send him any. Yeah, just think about him in the locker room here. It wouldn't have. It just wouldn't have worked. Yeah. So now you got to think. What's Buffalo going to do now? And there's a few wide receivers, I think, that could be on the move. I think T. Higgins should stay. Like, that's my opinion. Yeah. But he could be on the move if they get a bag. Mm-hmm. The Brandon Ayuk thing is still live. But why do the 49ers want to move on from him unless they've identified a guy in the draft they really like? Not to mention Debo Samuel and, and you know, they, they, they spend a lot of money on these guys. I just, yeah, he's another top receiver. And Justin Jefferson's probably the other name. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, you know, they just drafted Jordan Addison. So I don't know why they want to really move on from him. Anyways, I just look at it and say, you know, the, the, there, those are three big names. Do you think Buffalo makes a move on any of those guys? I think they're on the phone. I think they try. I mean, I think they, they try and give them an offer that they can't refuse, but you got to look at, the Bengals ain't going to do anything to help the bills out. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't send nobody there to help them out. And, but I can see, you know, a team from the NFC or something like that getting involved, but I'm not getting rid of Justin Jefferson unless I get a haul. I think he's so good and he's so key to whatever young quarterback they bring in. I don't know if it's going to be JJ McCarthy. If it was going to be Penix or whoever it might be, but having Addison and, 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 Jefferson together with a young quarterback is going to be gold. So I, I wouldn't be so quick to get rid of him either. Brandon Ayuk, I, I, I think he's in a situation now where he wants to go be the man. He wants he I think he wants out more than they want him out. But I think if the Niners lose him, it really throws their whole thing off. And yeah, Samuel's a good player, but he's always getting helped off the field. And if you lose him and now he gets hurt, he can't play the full season, that whole offense just completely gets blown up. But I, I, I think Buffalo right now, I think they just wanted to get rid of Diggs. I think they wanted him out of there. And I think they were going to get a, re- a receiver in the draft anyway. They might be looking at two of them now. 
you know, maybe a first round guy and then a guy later in the draft, but and maybe they feel they could put I would say put anybody, but they could put guys around Josh Allen that he's good enough. If you got if you can get open and you got good wheels, he can find you. So maybe that's where they're gonna go with this. But I don't see his team like Cincinnati or any other team near the top trying to help the Bills, you know, become a better team. But unless they the, unless they just give them something they can't refuse. But I mean, it's it's going to be a tough situation for Buffalo. I think they're they're getting close to being in full rebuild, man. Do you think that them making this move indicates that the wide receivers that are in this draft can play right away and make an impact? I think so. I think a lot of teams feel that way. I think the the wide receiver depth now in the NFL and coming out of college, I think it's so good that not saying you can throw anybody in there, but I think you know Diggs isn't getting any younger, you know. Potter, really look, look, to be honest, man, the reason they lost that game to Kansas City is because Diggs had it. He dropped a couple passes. Yep. He, he dropped a big one down the sidelines. You know, he's kind of yelling at everybody else, but he wasn't making plays when they needed him to make plays. They did everything else right. He, okay, you want the ball. You got open. The quarterback found you 50 yards downfield and hit you square in the hands, and you dropped, which w- w- would have been the game winning play. And, you know, Kansas City would have been gone early. But, you dropped the ball. You haven't shown up in these big games and you've done a lot of yelling and hollering, but maybe they feel they can get some kid, one of these young guys that can come in right away and at least, at least match your production and give them a little, some younger legs and some more speed out there and move on from because NFL receivers, they go from being pro bowl level to average guys really quick. And maybe they're doing like the Patriots where they were known for getting rid of a guy early before it's too late. I got another thought on the Buffalo Bills I want to get into on the other side. And will the Patriots ever find a top receiver? We'll get into that. What's going on with them? Serone Battles here. I'm Joe Murray. Skaz is doing it all back there tonight, guys. And the phone number is 617-779-0985. We're on YouTube, Subtubers. Well, I'll talk to you guys right after the break. You're listening to Joe. You're Murray. listening to Joe Murray. You're listening to Joe.
right, back here, 98 Five, the Sports Hub. The AFC shook up today with the trade of Stefan Diggs to the Houston Texans. I'm going to flat out ask you out this one. I'm going to, well, let me say that again, sir. Let me set it up a little bit better than that. <laughs> I'm going to flat out ask you this. Does Josh Allen need a star receiver to still be successful in the NFL? Oof. Man, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think at times, um, Stefan Diggs kind of demanding the ball in key situations kind of took away from what made what makes Josh Allen special. His ability to just, you know, extend the extend time and find guys that are just guys that just get open and let his arm strength do do the talking. And I think he ends up forcing passes to Diggs. And, you know, on the flip, it's 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 no it, it's no mystery that, you know, Josh Allen gets a lot of turnovers, a lot of forced throws in the coverage because you got a guy who's I'm open, I'm open, I'm open. It's like, man, there's three people around you. Yeah, but throw it anyway. I go get it. And then you throw interception, same guys yelling at you. So I think in today's NFL, with the amount of speed that these receivers are coming out of the draft with their ability. Now, I think you see him in more spread formations, more five, four or five wide guys out there and him using his, natural ability to find guys that are open all over the field. And I think it kind of makes them more dangerous. You know, we thought the same thing when, when um, Tyreek Hill left Kansas city and the exact opposite happened, it became more dangerous because the ball gets spread around now and you don't know where he's going to go. So, I mean, we've Tom Brady, how many times the good guys left and then he's, it doesn't matter. Now I'm just going to throw it whoever's open. Yep. So, I mean, he loses Tom Brady, still wins super bowls. I mean, excuse me, loses, uh, Randy Moss, Troy Brown, all the all his key guys. Every time one loses, he finds somebody else who finds the open guy. And I think Josh Allen now is old enough to and has been around long enough now to where he doesn't really need the Stephon Diggs to be a good quarterback. So I think if whoever rookie they throw out there, if they make a trade, or whatever, Josh Allen is still going to be a major threat and might be more difficult to defend now that you don't know who to take away. Well, the kid Kincaid that they drafted from Utah. He, he was a stud in college. I'm talking like 80 balls caught. Mm-hmm. And he really made an impact. They, they now have him in Knox. So maybe they try to run the ball a little bit with James Cook, who really turned it on a year ago. Yeah. And to your point, it was Diggs that had some of the mental mistakes on the football team, which is why they got bounced. So maybe mm-hmm. they do. They they believe in probably everything you're saying right now. But when it comes to Buffalo, Look at all the moves they've made this year. Yeah, They've lost their safety, their corner, their linebackers. Their linebackers. Both safeties, it's, I believe. It's, it's, it's just you look at it and say, can they compete in the AFC East next year? And right now, I probably have the Jets and Dolphins at the top. Yeah, I mean, the Jets, man, I know it's people are more don't want to commit to them because of the logo and the name. It's the Jets. So, you know, you never believe in them until they actually do something. But if you stripped the logo away and just said, oh, man, it's Aaron Rodgers. You got Wilson to the left. You got Brees Hall behind him. You know, you just you, you just picked up a left tackle. I can't think of his name from Dallas. And then you got Williams now on the right-hand side with a top five defense, you know, cap- capable of being on the top five defense. You would think immediately that's a Super Bowl contender. But because it's the Jets, people are like, I don't trust him. You know, Aaron Rodgers, ah, it's like, I don't care what you think about him with his politics or whatever he thinks or whatever. It's one of the greatest arm talents we've ever seen in the sport. And he now he has a re- stud receiver to his left and right, one coming off a bad knee injury, but he's got an elite running back behind him. He's now has his left tackle. He's got the defense. I think the Jets are the best team in AFC East right now. I put my money on them before I would uh, Miami. I just don't believe in Miami that much either, but I do think the Jets are the best team in the, in the division. All right, Saron, you see what's going on with the Houston Texans? They uh, yeah, had a couple of bad years, right? What, Davis Mills played quarterback, and Nick Casario took over, and they removed some plate people. and mm-hmm. Oh, they got into a defensive-minded rookie coach. Yep. They draft the quarterback number two overall. They mm-hmm. trade up in the draft to get the best pass rusher available. They sign free agents. They're a playoff team. They won a playoff game against Cleveland. And now they are loading up. I I always wanted to use the Texans as a blueprint for the New England Patriots. <laughs> Man, they had the guy here. And here he is yeah. building it out there now. Yeah. I mean, it, it's 
it's a simple formula. I mean, it, it's okay. You got your quarterback. Okay. He, he looks decent. And well, they had to the left tackle. Oh, they, yeah. they hit on their receivers and Nico Collins and tank. Dell. I think both were third round guys a year apart or something like that. Mm-hmm. And the tight end ended up being the stud. The running back was, well, once he was an offensive rookie of the year, the year before last, but he was close to it. He didn't, he wasn't great last year, but then they went out and added another running back to it. But you had your young quarterback, had some success. He makes the pro bowl. You get a playoff game. And then you immediately say, let's build around this kid. That's something we all been screaming for. You know, with Mac Jones, he's doing the gritty in the pro bowl. We're like, okay, go get him some receivers, go get him some help. And the exact opposite happened. You see, look at Chicago right now. We know Kayla Williams is going. He hasn't played a down for them yet. But the first thing they did is go get Keenan Allen to go with DJ Moore. They, they're, they're already giving the kid help before he even gets there. And it's like, that's what you do with a young quarterback. Yes, he might struggle. He might have whatever's going to have up and ups and downs. But let's make it easy on this kid. Let's make it comfortable for him. And this is what we're begging for the Patriots to do now. Get your quarterback. Commit to that quarterback. Build around that quarterback. And then, you know, throw the football off there comes to Tim and see what happens. But this whole sit around and try this and try. No, the game is made around the quarterbacks. Get your quarterback, build around the quarterback, win the football games, and may the best team win. That's the way you have to do it. And, and I'm praying the Patriots do the exact same thing as what Houston is doing right now. All right, Soren. So you just kind of went over some of the names. So when C.J. Stroud goes under center, he's going to have Diggs on his right. He's going to have Nico Collins on his left and Tank Dell in the slot. And then when they make a substitution, it's going to be John Mechie and Robert Woods. Yeah. Wow. And they, they oh, they'll re- leave out the tight end. Yeah. I was Joe say, Mixon. They re- and they re-signed Dalton Schultz. Uh, yep. And Joe Mixon's now in the mix. You mentioned Damian Pierce. They signed J.J. Taylor, which I thought was kind of funny. But, dude, they loaded up on their defense. Uh, they got Jeff Akuda now to kind of help them out in their, in their secondary after drafting um, – What's his name there a couple of years ago? But uh, they got Miles Bryan in now. I know, say whatever you want about him, but he's a system guy that can fill some roles. Mm-hmm. And they really beefed up. They got the Aziz uh, Al Shahir for the middle linebacker. Yep. They added two defensive linemen as well. Like this team is. And they ain't got the draft yet. Exactly. <laughs> They're poised. Like they even moved back. Remember, they traded, uh, they made a trade to move back uh, in the draft this year with um, with the Vikings as well. So, like. I just look at this team and say, man, this could have been the blueprint. So I, so I ask you, with Mayo and uh, Wolf and everything that's going on here, can the Patriots turn their franchise around just like the Texans did a year ago drafting a quarterback at three? Yeah, they can. It can happen fast. I mean, it, 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 the NFL is made for it to rotate. When teams are great today, they're bad tomorrow, the bad teams are on top. Detroit two years ago was a three-win team, and they were in the NFC Championship game. The Browns, no one thought the Browns were going to be good with Deshaun Watson, let alone five different quarterbacks, and they still won, what, 11 games or whatever it was? So you can go from bad to really good in a heartbeat. All it takes is a couple players to hit, maybe a free agent out of nowhere, a rookie quarterback, whatever it may be. You can, Joe Flacco was a quarterback in Cleveland. They made the playoffs. It, it You could just catch lightning in the bottle, man, and just turn it around real quickly. And the Patriots, one thing I will say, their defense is good. <laughs> their defense is going to be pretty good. If you look at the games they played last year, and now you just add in Gonzalez and Judon, that's a good defense. There was a lot of games they probably would have won if those two were there most of the season. The DeVitos and Sam Howells and all these other games, they would have won those if those two guys were there. The defense is going to be good. They just have to hit on somebody in the draft. If it's if the quarterback is okay, but they nail the receiver or the other way around or something like that, they need something to go in their, go their way on, on, on offense. But I don't think there was far away. I don't think anybody in the NFL is as far away from being a playoff team as you think they are. It, 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 it happens pretty fast, but I actually believe they can turn it around. And I know people are down for some reason on defensive guys being head coaches. To me, defensive guys are the ones who are around longest. They keep their job longer. They, they're they good at coaching a whole team as we're an offensive guy is all about the offense and end up losing because the offense doesn't come through. But the Mike Tomlins, the Harbaugh's, you know, Belichick, um, what's his name? They just left, uh, left Seattle. I can't think of his name right now. But the defensive guys are the ones who last in the NFL 
And I think, you know, defensive head coaches are still always going to be the ones who are dominant. Mike Tomlin, they, they always going to be there. And I'm not too down on them having a defensive head coach as long as you get good offensive talent. And I don't think the Patriots is far away from being a, I don't know, eight, nine win team on the, the, the cusp of making the postseason. I don't think they're that far away. Just to add to that, I think that you mentioned Dan Quinn was one of the guys you were referencing in the other one. Um, yeah. this off season was Leslie Frazier, not Leslie Frazier. Who's the, who went to, um, Oh, Raheem, down to Raheem, Atlanta, Raheem Morris, Raheem Morris. But, but and, if you um, look at them, they had offensive, Pete Carroll, they, yeah, Pete Carroll, but they had offensive coordinators. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, like both guys. Yep. They're defensive minded coaches, but look who they had, you know, between Kingsbury and, and Robinson, like, yep, we're going to be the coach. That's a better option than I hate to say it, Belichick and McDaniels. It was just a better option for both those teams. So I do agree with that. But to your point, Defensive coaches can stick around, but I do think they need the offensive coordinator. So, um, yeah, we can continue to talk about that as we're here until midnight tonight. Uh, Jalen Brown said something uh, in post game that I want to just uh, re rack with you. And also, Kristaps Porzingis talked about his health heading into the playoffs. We'll do that as we're here until midnight tonight. Anything else you guys want to talk about? 617 779 Serenal Battles here. I'm Joe Mariscaz back there doing it all by himself right here on 98 Father Sports Hub. Sports Hub headlines. Celtics beat Oklahoma City 135 100. They clinch home court throughout the playoffs and the best record in the NBA, and they're off until Friday night when they take on the Sacramento.
night? What did, did you have it looked at? What were the results and how did it feel tonight? Um, yeah, uh, I think I got like a, a sprain or, you know, like a, a strain on a, a ligament in my hand, but I think it's fine. You know, it's something I'm not concerned with going forward, but it would bother with me. It bothered me a little bit tonight, but part of it is, you know, working through it, playing through it, because that gives you a little bit more information towards down the line if, you know, things were to get any worse, but I think it's nothing to be concerned about. Jerome Battles joining us. Yeah, so, yeah, he basically says that we're always going to ask him about his hand, and I think he opened up a can of worms doing that tonight. <laughs> I'm still, as I'm listening to that, I'm sitting here like, dude, who told you to say anything? And it's it's the fact that he said it's a ligament or something like that. It's, it's like, yeah, because the doctors told you you hurt a ligament in your hand. You know, it's not like if if, if you're sitting there and your hand's hurting right now, you wouldn't be like, oh, it's the ligament in my, you know, so whatever ligament in my hand. That happened because that's what the doctors told you. Yep, you got a whatever damaged ligament. I wouldn't have said anything. I would have just chilled. Even if I wrapped my hand up the rest of the way, I wouldn't have said anything about it. But he's saying it's not a concern. It bothered him tonight, but it's not a concern. Dude, two weeks before the playoffs, yeah, that is a concern. And the team, I'm pretty sure they're concerned. They're going to be looking at it, evaluating it, whatever. But as soon as he got off that podium, I, I would have called his hand an Uber. Like, get him out of here. I would have wrapped that, wrapped that whole arm up and say, see you later. And don't come back until we we find out who we're playing in the playoffs. And, and no, I mean, it's, I think he just killed any shot of any of these dudes playing any more than 15 minutes a game, if that, for the remainder of the season. I, I wouldn't have said a word. Now, like, instead of us talking about, late game situations or can they you know momentum continue in the playoffs we're going to be talking about can Chris Tapps Porzingis stay healthy because after the game tonight he says that he's ramping up and is almost 100 percent so we're going to be talking about him his health yeah. Jalen Brown's hand we're still I'm still always worried about Jason Tatum missing a game like he did no one thought he'd get hurt in game seven they lost him there so I yeah. just I just feel like they've been they've had luck all I shouldn't say luck They've been fortunate not to deal with many injuries all year. You got Drew mm -hmm. Holiday with his whatever's going on in his arm. It's just mm -hmm. here we are now, about a week, two weeks away from the playoffs. Remember years ago, it was Gordon Hayward. Oh, they need him for the playoffs. Or is Kyrie Irving going to be right? Or is this guy going to be right? Every Never year, happened. it's something yeah, every it's run. Something, yeah. This thing spearheaded it tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's it's in, but the only saving grace is I think it's a league wide thing now. I think that all the teams are really going through something. Even in the out west, Jamal Murray's been in and out. You know, uh, with Denver, you see what's going on in Milwaukee. You see Embiid's leg. Miami never really got right after losing all the guys they lost. They never got it together. Yeah, Jimmy Butler, real quick, he misses like half the season every year. No one says a word. You wonder why he's so good in the postseason. Like, a dude rests all year, does nothing. And he's ready to go come playoff time. But you see the Hawks with Trey Young. Uh, the Clippers are going through stuff. Um, Shea Gilders Alexander, he was out tonight. Minnesota's got a lot of injuries with Towns being out. Gobert in and out. They got injuries they're dealing with. So I think the Celtics right now are they're pretty much where everybody is. Everybody's kind of a little, a little banged up. But I got to give Missoula credit again for managing these guys' minutes. You know, we were down on Al Holford playing back-to-backs. We thought they would really hurt them. Pozingas sat out a lot of games. You know, they kind of rotated lineups. Browns missed some games. Tatum missed a couple. You saw Holiday miss some games here and there. Like Smith, Pozingas, Holford. They rotated guys around. Even some of the guys on the bench have missed some time. Cornette. So they've kind of managed it. But I think now you let these guys chill for two weeks and let them get as healthy as they can and let them go with the full roster because I think when they're all out there, they're almost unbeatable when they have a full team, and you want to keep that going through the postseason. So Joe Mazzulla tonight was asked on if the Celtics celebrated clinching the best record in the NBA tonight. Uh, I wanted to ask you your thoughts on the team. Should they celebrate? You know, Would you criticize them if they did? Uh, because it, you know, I think they knew this was coming all year long. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I hope they're not popping champagne and you know going all out. But like, you guys have been here before. I just, I don't know. You, would you would you criticize them if they did do that? 
it depends on what kind of celebrating they did. Like if the guys are in there, like, you know, dapping it up, shaking hands, like, man, this is that's it's a what, good that, accomplishment. That's what it was. He, yeah. So he goes, if cel- simple. he goes, if celebrating is bringing it in and shaking everyone's hand, then we don't take that stuff for granted. But he, th- he thought yeah. it was important to simulate tonight being a clincher. So I'm glad that you agreed. I'm on the same page, yeah, that, but that's... if they were popping bottles, I would have been like, yeah, oh, nothing, guys. nothing, no one's on IG, you know, <laughs> live wearing throwing goggles. up deuces, <laughs> yeah, wearing <laughs> goggles, like, yeah, we the best, we the best, not like a college team, don't do none of that, you know, Missoula comes walking in, everybody's spraying champagne, and he's two-stepping, no, you don't, you don't need none of that, but winning 60 games is an accomplishment, doesn't happen much, I mean, it, it, as good as the Celtics have been over 50 years or so, I mean, it's, it's still a, a rare thing for them to reach, and it's a good accomplishment to be the best team in the league from start to finish, real, not to finish, but through the regular season. That's kind of a, a big deal. But now the real season begins. Now you're past a, a stage of being bored and looking for motivation. Now the tr- it's right there. It's yours. It's yours to lose. You've been best offensive team, one of the best defensive teams. You got youth. You got size. You got athleticism. You got smart players. It's right there in front of you. You've made it for the most part outside of Brown's hand. For the most part, you're healthy going into the playoffs, which is something a lot of teams can't say. So it's right there for you. And all you have to do is seal the deal. And I don't think there's honestly, I don't think there's a team better than them. And they just they now they just have to finish. You have to play strong and finish this thing out. All right, we got uh, Jose on the line. What's going on, Jose? You're on the sports hub. Uh, what's up, guys? I, I, I'm, I feel like this is the, the perfect storm, um, you know, the perfect setup for us to be disappointed again because, you know, like the, the Celtics, I, I just feel like, you know, if there's a team that, that, that in any professional sport, at least in the last, like, decade, where the regular season does not matter, it's about what you do in the postseason, I think it's this team. You know what I mean? They can never get their heads out of, out of, you know, I don't know if I can say it or not, but they can never get their, uh, uh, their heads out of the rear. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, they lost two games to the Hawks in the last, like, week. And, 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 and correct me if I'm wrong, last postseason they got pushed to six or seven against that same team, and they're way better than that team. You know what I mean? Their head and shoulders above all the competition, and the, 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 the better the two of the two Jays, uh, the, the the better performer in the playoffs is Jalen Brown. Last year, he was potting plants. He cut his hand going into the postseason. This year, now it's coming out with the, he has this ligament thing in his hand. We don't know if Tatum's going to show up consistently and put his foot on the opponent's neck. You know what I mean? I just feel like, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm being uh, pessimist here and negative or whatever, but I just feel I'm, I'm concerned. I feel, uh, you know, I just want to hang up and hear what you guys think about that. Thanks, Ron. I kind of like the fact that they're, that, that here locally, it's it's a little bit, I would say 60-40. There's more people confident in the Celtics this year. The other 40%, which is big, still thinks that they're going to have problems late in games. I think they can be front runners and win that way and blow everybody out. And I also yeah. think that in close games, I do think that they have better talent, and I still want to, uh, to uh, Jason Tatum taking those shots. But I, in a way, I kind of want to see them prove every that 40% wrong this year. Well, I tell you what, this the, that feeling he has, I understand it. I mean, they've been this, they've been far in the last few years, but this is the first time they've actually been the favorite. They've been expected to be this good. When they were getting there against LeBron and, and Giannis and beating KD with the Nets, it, it, the Isaiah Thomas, Kimba Walker, even the Kyrie Irving teams, they weren't ex- they weren't the favorite. They weren't expect. It was always it was like, oh wow, they made it. I'm shocked they beat Philly. I'm shocked they beat Milwaukee. It was kind of out of nowhere. This is the first time where they're expected to be the best team in the league and be the best team in the postseason. And I think this is what he feels about them not being able to close. It's the same thing Denver Nuggets fans said about Jokic and Murray up until June of last year. It's the same thing everyone said about Steph. He's not good in the fourth quarter. He shoots too many threes until he wins the championship. Well, he, he, he's not going to win another one like that. He wins the second one. Yeah, but still, I don't trust him late in games. They need another guy. KD comes in and wins another one. Yeah, but all those guys are gone now. I still don't trust Steph. He goes to Celtics 35 a night. Everyone's going to be skeptical until you actually do it. I think the Celtics team is so good that those situations, I don't think are going to come up that much. And <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't think a lot of their games, especially early on, are going to come down to the last five minutes in a tight playoff game where you need these guys to hit big shots. 
I think they're going to steamroll a lot of these teams early. And they're going to have some close games. They're going to lose some games we're going to be upset about. But I think against like the Hawks and the Sixers or some of these lesser teams in Eastern Conference, they're going to beat these teams bad. And because the starters are going to be playing way more minutes, that defense is going to be way better. I think they're good enough to withstand Tatum having a bad night or Brown having an off night. I think they're just that good. You got a team where your fourth, fifth, fifth best player is out there getting triple doubles and one of the best shot blockers in the league is a guard. You got guys off the bench giving you 20 that can hit 10 threes in a game. All three of you guys off the bench can hit 10 threes in a game. I think they're good enough to where Tatum and Brown don't have to score 30 plus in order for them to win like they did in previous years when it was Marcus Smart and it was Grant Williams and it was uh, Kelly Olenek and all these and, and Daniel Tice. Them, them guys are gone. You got a bunch of guys out there now that can get you buckets. And I think they're going to win it without them really needing these guys to have monster games. Take one more call before the break. Matt is in Providence. Hey, Matt. Yo, thanks for taking my call. A few weeks ago, you were on, um, on with uh, Silver and Matt, and they wrote you about your opinion on Kobe Bryant, which drove me nuts. I just want to thank you for your consistency about Kobe Bryant, number one. Number two, let's move off that. Joe, do you remember this? I don't you remember this. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. They were terrible to you about your opinion on on Kobe, but moreover. (laughs) So, so Matt, your phone stinks. But I, I, so, so we'll we'll go to a break in a minute here, but I was on with Michael Felger today on the off-air show. Okay. And the off-air show, it's when Mike goes off, it's kind of like streamed on Facebook. So, like, we we get to swear and talk about things that aren't sports. (laughs) But I went in there today and I go, listen, people call my show. Telling telling me the takes that you guys do all day long, and I hate it. <laughs> like like you know what I mean? Like they're just <laughs> they do their own show. They're great at it. They're awesome at it. They're the best. Their rating show it. It's been consistent for so long. I don't always agree with their takes. I just don't because I have my own opinions. You know what I mean? Just like yeah. you, you get your own. Yeah. You call into the show you know, last week about Drake Bay, right? And everyone's all upset. This is an one, opinion. One day yeah. you're like, you're yeah, he's not the guy. Then you go see him, and you're the guy, and everyone still hates you. It's like you, you give, you Can't actually win. changed your opinion seeing him live. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, but that's what I mean about the power of that show. It's like yeah. people are calling in now to be like, you know, Joe, da, da, da. it's like, yes, I'm on with them tomorrow, by the way, as well. So, yes, but, yeah, I, I I, just, I'm the guy over there in the third seat over there while they do their show just not agreeing with them, and it's fine. It's good radio. But, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, I mean, this is what I exactly said to Felger earlier today is what just <laughs> happened. You you got to have me. It's, it's an opinion. It's opinion-based. I, you you have your opinion, you stick to it, or if something happens, you have the you have the right to change your mind. It's okay. I was down on Drake May. I'm, I'm not saying the kid's going to be the greatest quarterback of all time or franchise guy. I was standing 20 yards away, and I could hear the ball whistle, and I said, yeah, I see why they like him. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I couldn't. It'd be hypocritical of me to go there and see this kid in person and, and lie just to keep up with my first opinion. <laughs> It's like, no, I, I, I'm standing right. I'm standing next to Dan Quinn and Gerard Mayo. I can see what they see. Yes, I see it. It looks totally different in person. I get it. But people, I got more criticism for changing my mind after seeing the kid in person <laughs> than for sticking with my opinion when I saw him on TV. It's because so, you did it on Felger and Matt's. Not because, not yeah, because that's of right. your opinion. Yeah. That's where I'm going with it. And if like, people think, this is the weird thing. I know you get this a lot. They think the producers told you to change your mind to get people to right. listen. A producer. It's like, I've never been told to say anything. And you've worked here for a, about here. a year or so, right? Nobody yeah. ever told you what to say or what not to say. Never. See? Not a single right, time. Right, No moral high ground on this show. No one pays <laughs> me to tell anybody anything. No one anything. pays us to do, <laughs> to do anything. <laughs> We're here till People now. believe it, though. I People believe, like, oh, you just saying that because the, the station wants you to say that. It's like, oh, they've never told me that, ever. All right, we got to go to break. I w- I'm going to ask you about Rajon Rondo retiring because we only have a few oh, minutes left. Uh, but this hour of the sports has been brought to you by our good friends over at Valvoline. It's an oil change. Enjoy quick and convenient vehicle maintenance this month. Visit NewEnglandOilChange.com for 15% off your next drive through oil change at Valvoline. It's an oil change. Now open in Rainham, Reading, and Braintree. We'll wrap this show up on the other side. Don't go anywhere. There's more Joe Murray. More Joe Murray.
Fennel going to light a victory cigar in the Hall of Fame? Yes.